Hey everybody, this is Coach Noah, and I'm preparing for a talk tomorrow at my BNI chapter, which stands for Business Networkers International. And I'm preparing a health talk um, based on a lecture given by Joshua Rosenthal, the founder of the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, where I got my health coach um, certification and training from. And the talk that I'm preparing is all about water and the health benefits of water. And I wanted to practice my health talk um, for you and also um, so, so you can enjoy the benefits of these tips about water. So this is based on a lecture that was given by Joshua Rosenthal in one of the lectures that he gives as part of the health coach training program from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And in this talk, he gives a lot of tips and stories about water. Um, the first story that he shared with us was about a doctor um, in Iran who was um, imprisoned for um, you know, undisclosed reasons. But when he went to prison, many of his fellow inmates um, came to him with back pain and the common cold and all sorts of things and he encouraged them to drink more water and he found that the drinking more water um, didn't only help them um, reduce their symptoms but it also helped them um, cure whatever they were dealing with and um, so the next point oh that by the way you can find out more about that in a book called Your Body's Many Cries for Water because after he got out of prison, he came to the United States. And what he did was he made his whole career about convincing the American Medical Association to promote um, hydration and drinking more water. So now the next question is, what is made up of 75% water? and what's made up in our bodies of 85% water. So that is um, your body is made up of 75% water and your brain is made up of 85% water. So if the body and the brain are 75 and 85%, you start to get a connection with how important it is to focus on water, but mostly we just focus on food when it comes to nutrition. So another question for you is, do you treat dehydration with soda? There's a lot of people who will drink soda as a way to treat their dehydration when in fact soda and um, caffeinated beverages and alcohol are actually dehydrating. Um, some medical professionals that I've consulted with say that you need to drink two glasses of water for every cup of coffee, that kind of equivalent, um, to offset the dehydrating effects. So how much water is enough per day? Sometimes people will say, you know, drink six to eight glasses of water. Some people say as much as 15 glasses of water. And this is where the idea of bio-individuality really comes into play. Bio-individuality is an idea from integrative nutrition that says one person's medicine is another person's poison. There's no one size that fits all for everybody. So given that, um, how much water you might need to drink is different than how much water your husband or your wife or your brother or your sister might need to drink based on their needs. But the point of this talk is to be open to exploring how much water your body needs. So how does water affect your sleep and how does water affect your dreams? Well, that goes into the question of how much water should you drink at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the day? And when it comes to water, water's like coffee. You want to drink your coffee mostly in the morning. In the afternoon and the evening, you put that caffeine in your system, it could end up affecting your sleep. Now, again, that's not for everybody. But the idea that Joshua Rosenthal proposes is drink more of your water in the morning, drink some of your water in the afternoon, and drink none of your water at night. And that, for people who get interrupted with their sleep because they've drunk too much water, could be a solution 
to making sure you get a good night's rest. So what's the effect of too much water in your system? Well, for some people, too much water can flood your body of minerals so your body doesn't have enough minerals to function. Um, the effect of too little water can be the, really the effects of dehydration like headaches, fatigue, extreme food cravings. And so that brings me to how can you use water to solve some of your food cravings. And what is suggested here is that if you're experiencing a craving for something that you know is not good for you, go ahead and drink one to two glasses of water and wait 15 minutes and do an experiment and see if that craving calms down or goes away. Now the question what's the best type of water um, comes up and so the best type of water for you maybe you buy a case of bottled water and you keep it in the back of your car because you're on the go maybe you're someone who lives in a community where the tap water is clean and there's not too much fluoride or chlorination in the water um, some people use um, Brita filters, other people use charcoal filter systems like Multipure in their house. And you want to be conscious of how, what kind of chemicals are in your water um, because that will have an effect on your blood and your system. However, the most important thing is that you have access to as much water as you need. And that's a huge global issue right now, so it's an opportunity to be really grateful um, if you have access to clean drinking water that you drink enough. Now I'm going to jump into a different topic that's not just about drinking water but how can water therapies help with the common cold or flu. Think about um, showering. Does showering make you feel good? I mean for most people they take a shower and they feel better. They feel good. So you can take a shower and maybe you're showering once a day and if you're at home and you're sick, let's say with a common cold or flu, why don't you try showering two or three or four times a day? If a shower makes you feel better, then feeling better can really help you get better. That's the idea of using showering as a therapy. Um, there's another way too that you can use showering to help cleanse your skin. The skin organ is the largest organ in your body. And what you can do is at the end of your shower start to cool down your water and alternate it because what it does is it brings um, the blood flow to the surface of the skin and then when you cool the water down it brings the blood flow more to the core of the body towards the stomach and that process helps to um, helps to cleanse the skin maybe even better than any sort of skin therapies with lotions and potions and creams and that's something that you can make part of your water bill. So go ahead and try that. Um, water is great for recovery as well after runs. A nice hot bath with some Epsom salts I highly recommend from my personal experience. Helps me recover from um, my training for my runs. And a most important question I think is how long can you live without water? How long can you live without water? So the question of how long can you live without water, um, well, another question is to ask how long can you live without food. Some people can live without food for a month, but how long can you live without water if you're in the desert just a few days? And the question leaving, leaving off here is how will you experiment with water for yourself so you can discover what's enough water for you, what's the best form of water, what's the best time of day, how to use water to make yourself feel better, to cleanse your skin, to recover from a common cold. Um, and how can a health coach help you figure out what's the best way to use water? And um, so what we offer as health coaches is a complimentary health coaching session. I like to call it my kick-ass coaching session that I give you as a gift and we can explore your relationship with water how much water is enough for you and create a custom hydration plan which will help improve your health so a nice little bonus that I'm offering here are um, two um, tip sheets as well here which I'm going to tell you what they are um, and this includes drinking more water it's 10 ways to increase your energy and 10 tips to weigh less and live more. 
Thanks for listening and have a great day.